Hi everyone, welcome to A Level Lessons Online. Um, today marks the first uh, part of the entire series on H two geography, or to some of you, H one geography may also be applicable as well. Um, this entire series aims to cover content knowledge and some skills which you can apply towards your A level examinations when it comes to, in this case, geography. So for geography, we will first start off with physical geog which is something that I realize a lot of J1s and JC2s tend to struggle with. So we'll tend to cover more on that and the relevant skills that are required in order to uh, master that physical job essay or physical job DRQ that you need to answer in every paper. So of course, we'll start off with your um, atmospheric content followed by what comes after it's going to be your hydrological cycles and all. And finally, to conclude with things like deforestation or cyclones. So when you first look at geography, the first thing you're going to look at is this concept on the Haley cell. So Haley cell, okay, as listed over here. So what the Haley cell actually is, all right, we're just going to jump right in, okay. Um, it simply comprises of your ITCZ over here, all right, as well as your STHP. So these are basically two extremely important concepts you need to make sure you understand because um, they are going to be a recurring trend in every single topic that you're going to study uh, as you move on in terms of your atmospheric uh, circulation content. And lastly, the thing that comprises of your Haley cell would also be your trade winds. So these are really the three main concepts you need to understand which comprise of this Haley cell before we actually formally move on. So when you first look at the entire Haley cell, all right, we are looking at a lot of concepts on wind. So when you look at wind, the first thing you need to understand is that winds, they always travel from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. So this applies to your trade winds, your monsoon winds, and any sort of um, winds in general, right? Which is why you always realize that, let's say if you are um, standing in a field or, or, or you're standing in a place whereby it's extremely hot, right? Um, a higher temperature would tend to generate a region of lower pressure, right, which is why the wind will tend to travel towards that direction. Alright, so we're just going to jump right in into the intertropical convergence zone. Right, this is known as your ITCZ. So this ITCZ over here is going to be extremely important. Um, so we see your ITCZ. What is it all about? Okay, so your ITCZ is really basically a low pressure belt. So you need to understand that ITCZ is a low pressure belt, not a high pressure belt, okay? So basically your ITCZ is a driver of trade winds, alright? So notice the key term here, they are a driver. So they are not trade winds, they drive the trade winds, okay? As your trade winds, right, like we had just mentioned, they move from a region of high to low pressure, alright? So... ITCZ is basically the zone of convergence of trade winds from both your South Hemisphere as well as your North Hemisphere. So they basically converge together and that is where your ITCZ um, is known to be as the convergence zone. So one thing um, which you need to know it as part of your syllabus, of course, is um, the characteristics okay, of your ITCZ. So namely, it would be that your ITCZ, they basically follow the position of the overhead sun. So the the, the position of the overhead sun, which we will later call OHS, is basically your, it is um, kind of like your prerequisite knowledge that you ought to know um, based on your first few lectures, which your school should have already covered. One more thing to note is that your ITCZ is also your line of your maximum insulation, which will come in handy later on because you'll realize that that is where your rapid and your rising um, moist warm air can actually be found. Right, so these are important concepts because this will lead to your convectional rainfall, which we will touch on in a later episode as to what exactly convectional rainfall is. Right, so really your ITCZ is basically, you just need to understand that it is a zone whereby there is extremely low pressure. So when there's low pressure, it means that there is high temperature. So temperature and pressure always work opposite. If you want a quick or easy way to remember is that temperature and pressure always work in the opposite direction. If there's low pressure, there is high temperature. If there's high pressure, there is low temperature. So this is an extremely important concept. You need to make sure you understand um, before you move on in terms of your entire Haley cell. Alright, so just to cover a bit, because this is something you tend to always see in your DRQs, and sometimes it will be like 
wait, what, the, what, what, what am I even looking at? Alright, so when you look at your ITCZ, ITCZ in different months can actually occur at different locations, right? So for instance, in the case of July, okay, you notice that ITCZ tends to go towards the North Hemisphere up into the Eurasian continent, okay? Whereas for January, right, you notice that your ITCZ is actually quite fluctuating, but it fluctuates around the equator instead of going so high up because you see, the one for ITCZ in July can reach up to around 30 degrees north, which is quite crazy, like it's actually quite high, right? And the reason behind this is because of your continental effect, right? As well as your Eurasian continent, which has a very, 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 very low specific heat capacity, okay? All this we will touch on later on as well, so you not, not to worry about that. But just take note that in the event that you need to remember, okay, um, when you look at ITCZ in different months, right, in June and July, okay, your ITCZ is generally found in Asia. So just now the Eurasian continent that we were looking at, okay, um, and this is because Asia is doing the, what actually happened is that Asia is experiencing the summer period, right, and how to know whether it's summer or winter, very simple, you look at your position of your overhead sun, if your overhead sun is above Asia, it means that there is a high, high insulation, as a result of high insulation, there is high heat, high heat means it's summer, okay, and then as for um, the case of your June and July position of your ITCZ, it is actually found near 23.5 degrees north, which some of you may have already heard in class, is known as the Tropic of Cancer. Okay, so in this case, like we have already seen um, previously, ITCZ can actually go up to 30 degrees north, um, or around maybe sometimes possibly 40 degrees north, depending on the weather. So when you look at the December climate, you notice that um, they are actually... The, as in your ITCZ, is generally found in 23.5 degrees south, okay, which is also known as your Tropic of Capricorn. So this is something that you will also have heard of in class. Um, and it actually tends to go no more than 5 degrees due to the small continent of Australia, right? So just now, if you actually looked over here, you notice how Australia is extremely small. This is Australia over here, okay? So as a result of Australia being extremely small, your January ITCZ tends to only fluctuate around equator, which, if you didn't know, is 0 degrees north, 0 degrees south. Right? Okay, so next we move on to STHP. So what is STHP? STHP is known as your tro uh, subtropical high pressure belt. So we see a subtropical high pressure belt, or, or otherwise known as STHP, something that a lot of schools tend to term it as, is basically known as a high pressure belt. So likewise, like we have just mentioned before, high pressure and temperature, how do they correlate? A high pressure would mean that there is low temperature. Okay, so basically your SCHB is where there is sinking air, and as a result, it is extremely dry. And not only is it dry, it is extremely um, cold as well. Okay, because you just think about it, let's say if you, you think about a very, very classic example, let's say um, when you go to let's say a very cold country like Japan or Korea, let's say during December period, right, you notice that the weather is always very cold. And as a result of it being very cold, it tends to be very dry as well, which is why, let's say, your, your, your lips will crack up, all that kind of things. So that is how you can very, very simply correlate them together. And one thing about SCHP is that you, do, you have to understand and acknowledge the fact that it follows the position, the movement sorry, of ITCZ. Alright, this is very important because in a lot of questions, A-level questions especially, um, a very common trend is, is, is they'll ask you like, um, to what extent is the movement of ITCZ the most important factor in influencing the tropics? And so from there, you have to go and determine, oh, the keyword there is movement, not position, because they are extremely different things. The movement of ITCZ can affect many things, but the position of ITCZ can only affect, let's say, certain regions. Okay, and lastly, you have to realize that um, because it is a region of high pressure, as we had mentioned earlier, right, winds are generated and they move from a region of high to low pressure, which is why here is where some of your trade winds are actually generated. So uh, it's not all, okay, because um, a lot of your, tr or, or of your trade winds, how, how it actually occurs, which we will cover later on as well, not to worry, um, is that it actually would, um, is a result of returning winds from um, ITCZ to STHP. So it's basically like a cycle. But that part not to worry, we'll cover it later on, okay? 
Alright, so now, yeah, so here is where you go on your trade winds. So your trade winds are basically known as your surface winds. So some schools may term it as surface winds, some schools may term it as trade winds. It's the same thing, okay? So basically, they are air which moves back towards the equator or ITCZ. Why? Okay, you have to realize that this is because it is a region of low pressure. So winds move from high to low pressure. So which is why they move from SHP, which is your high pressure, to ITCZ, which is your low pressure. And next thing is that it also follows the movement of ITCZ. So the movement over here, like we had just mentioned, is that trade winds, right? Let's say if ITCZ, as we had seen just now earlier, whereby it is found, um, let's say in, in January, is found in uh, around the equator, right? It means that most trade winds will only converge at the equator, not beyond, not before. It will be around ITCZ. So let's see if ITCZ, let's say, so happened due to climate change or something, it suddenly moves all the way to Australia. For example, uh, if it moves to Australia, what actually happens is that the trade winds will follow this ITCZ because they are going to the position whereby there is lowest pressure. So if they move towards ITCZ, it means that they will actually move towards Australia, and that is where the trade winds would converge at instead. Okay, so notice that the keyword here is movement. Okay, so basically how trade winds, how they work, is as they are moving, let's say if they pass the Indian Ocean or let's say the um, Atlantic Ocean, what actually happens is that they actually pick up moisture. Winds tend to pick up moisture. You would learn more later on in monsoon winds, but trade winds can also pick up moisture. And what happens is that they actually drop this moisture, this rain, on the land before coming to ITCZ when the trade winds converge. So for example, if... I have got winds coming from the North Hemisphere as well as from the South Hemisphere. When they actually converge, what happens is that they would actually force the air parcel to rise. So basically when they converge, you just think of it as two bubbles, for instance, like merging together. Right? What actually happens is that this air parcel, when they converge, it will rise and then it will actually reach this concept which you need to understand called dew point temperature. We will cover later on in the convectional rainfall. So it will actually converge um, and reach dew point temperature whereby it condenses to form clouds, and then when it forms clouds, it will actually form rain. So this is where your concepts on rain has to come in, which is why everything about atmospheric circulation is all interlinked. And if you are struggling with this, don't worry, okay, we'll go it step by step. Later on, you will learn more about rain and how they form as well. Okay, so um, just need to understand very, very simply over here that trade winds are surface winds. They move towards ITCZ. When they converge, they bring rain. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So, a lot of you may be wondering, what are ex what exactly are my exam requirements for a Haley cell question? So, a Haley cell question can tend to come out as the bigger mark questions, uh, the bigger mark um, essays in this case. Okay. So, for instance, your 16 marks for H1 geography, as well as your 20 marks for H2 geography. So, when you look at... Um, such questions, okay, they actually require you to require you to make a judgment. Okay, all 20 mark essay questions require you to make a judgment. In this case, it will be for instance the influence of ITCZ or STHP relative to other factors. Okay, so other factors we can cover later on as well. So the ways you can make a judgment is through the use of a criteria. So in this case, ITCZ may affect all climates due to its global influence as compared to other factors which may only be localized. Okay, what do I mean by other factors which may be localized? For instance, you look at, let's say, orographic rainfall. Okay, some of you should have learned it by now. Orographic rainfall, how it works is that it when it actually when the when the winds actually converge against a mountain, it forces the air parcel to rise. But in that in that case, the rainfall is actually only formed at the mountain, but it's not formed all across the world. Because let's say if you look at a country like Singapore, or you look at a country like um yeah, for instance Singapore, there aren't that many mountains which are that high for the winds to actually force the air parcels to rise. So in this case, Singapore may instead be largely affected by ITCZ, which brings the rainfall as a result of the convergence of trade winds. So you have to look at a lot of different other factors and then weigh them later on. And we will actually attempt, okay, so for instance, this question over here, to what extent is ITCZ the most important factor, right, in influencing rainfall in the tropics? So we will attempt to answer this question at the end of this um, around five to six part series, okay, whereby we will 
answer this question and I will teach you how to properly structure entire essay and make use of the relevant criteria such as scale, such as temporal variations, such as spatial variations to properly answer this entire question and get the highest level you can for a physical job essay. Right, so um, in summary, basically your Haley cell uh, really just comprises of your trade winds, ITCZ, STHP, and you just need to understand the different concepts of these three different phenomenons in the world today, which would later on impact um, things like the different climatic zones, things like your monsoon winds, which we will cover in the next episode. Um, and that is really about it for the Haley cell.